Hi, I'm Realtor Bert Todd Abe. Welcome to another edition of Sipping Coffee or Tea with Realtor Bert Todd Abe. This is an educational video series uh, where we're going to uh, maneuver through the hype, the hoopla, and yes, even the media negativity surrounding the real estate industry here in San Antonio. Uh, so today's topic is uh, one of my favorites. And this one is going to be uh, five tips for people that are selling a home. In another video, we talked about uh, the five tips to uh, when buying a home. This one is uh, is true. Well, this this one can be used for sellers that are selling a home, and they can also uh, you, my audience can also go and uh, check out the video that I filmed uh, for the five tips on buying a home as well. I do encourage you to do that. Um, be sure to leave me comments down below, by the way, uh, of this series. Um, I'm a local real estate broker in San Antonio, Santino Properties LLC is the name of my company. And let's get right to the video. So the five tips, uh, first of all, let me start by saying uh, that selling a home uh, is uh, certainly an emotional process and it can be a very complex one, right? And it's one that you're going to want to enter into uh, with um, the right preparedness and the right frame of mind. When I'm working with a, a family that's selling the home with me, I ask them for two things essentially. I ask them for commitment and motivation. The commitment is the willingness to listen to my counsel, uh, listen to my guidance. Uh, I'm an industry pro. I've been at, at it here uh, for going on 10 years. So um, learn from, they can learn from my experience and things can go a lot smoother if they just uh, follow uh, my uh, direction and counsel. Uh, so that's the commitment. The motivation is demonstrated when uh, I give you a call on December 23rd and I tell you that there is a, uh, a family flying in from out of town that are very motivated to view the home that's for sale, our listing, and uh, they're very interested in the property to come view it tomorrow at noon, even though you're hosting uh, a Christmas Eve luncheon at 2.30. That's motivation. I ask for both from my sellers and uh, you'll find that uh, when you are motivated and you get past all the emotional stuff, uh, selling the home uh, can be a breeze, frankly, uh, but it's critical Results are all that matter to you. And it's critical uh, to choose the right industry professional. And in doing so, uh, I do uh, encourage you to ask a lot of terrific questions. Ask me as a guide for my um, um, pre-listing package. You know, I have literally a checklist of all the things that you should uh, want to ask your agent when um, when interviewing them to sell your home. So getting the biggest bang for your buck is critical on perhaps the most important, the largest asset that, that you and or your family owns. So it's very important. Uh, with the right strategies, however, you can, of course, increase your, um, uh, your chances of, of a successful home sale. And these are the five tips. So number one is going to be uh, prepare the home for sale and you're going to want to uh, declutter and also depersonalize. It's very, very important to have things in order when selling the home and for having the home show ready at all times. So you're going to want to have um, take a trip to the container store or something, a place along those lines, right, where you can buy those plastic bins that, that snap into place that a lot of folks like to put their holiday decorations in and so forth. Uh, my recommendation is to, is to, is to find the right um, strategy for that. Ask me for some advice. Feel free to text me for some from free advice. I'm, I'm happy to dispense it. But I, that, that's the very first thing that I would say to in decluttering is get those bins, um, start putting some stuff away little by little anything religious. Um, I pray every day. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, a, not ashamed or shy of saying that. Uh, I have a special relationship um, with, uh, with God. Uh, I believe so anyway. 
And I want to tell you that as much as I love Jesus, um, I would recommend that you put the, take those crosses off the walls. And if you need to even kind of spackle and, and cover the holes that are going to, that you have, uh, I've seen walls that have an entire, you know, kind of, uh, collection of crosses that can be off putting for, uh, some buyers. And remember the buyers are all that matter right now. Decluttering, but also depersonalizing, take those pictures off the walls. Start putting yourself not only in the buyer's shoes, like, hey, what, what would you like to see, for example, when you go to buy your next house, right? What are the things, how, how would you want to see the home staged? But certainly the buyer is the most important thing because all it takes is one. You'd want to have multiple buyers, of course, that where they're perhaps fighting over the house. But more importantly, you want to be able to, to um, attract a buyer and make them feel at home and let them picture themselves in this home. It's a little bit harder to do that when they see your personalized items, be it religious, family, familial, such as pictures and such. Uh, so try to do that, make it more neutral uh, because it'll be more appealing for to potential buyers. The next tip is of course, clean and repair. Um, you know, Nothing says more to a buyer than a well-kept home, one which has been freshly painted. Uh, I just met a terrific uh, painter today. Um, and reach out to me for a recommendation uh, for his information. I'll be happy to provide that to you uh, because I think I think that not only is it nice to smell fresh paint on the walls, the buyers love that. But the other thing is, of course, uh, to know that it's been well maintained, right? And that's one way that you get that that across to buyers, and you let them know that you have nothing to hide. Number one, but number two, you maintain the house well. Nobody wants a home uh, which has deferred maintenance. That is, that you're kicking the can down the road. You haven't wanted to paint for years and years and years. Your your fascia boards outside uh, along the eaves and soffits. It, it, paint is worn it's 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 dripped in such a way that there's now wood rot uh around the trim boards around the windows uh wood rot there you got to eliminate that have a handyman come in and paint for you or a a, a, a professional contractor wh whoever you want to hire um but i do recommend that you get that done because um it could even lead to Deferred maintenance can even lead to uh, issues with even closing the loan. Uh, I once walked around a listing I was about to take uh, and the seller um, had a fascia board that had exposed wood. Like it was almost like it was painted. And then all of a sudden there's like this, they missed a spot or something. It was like about a foot, a foot 18 inches of bare wood. And then it was painted like the rest of it. And I say, you know, you're going to want to get that painted. Um, that can come up as a lender required repair if, if we find a buyer who's bringing a VA loan because VA won't, will not allow um, exposed wood and such. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it, Bert. Don't worry about it. Did get to it and sure enough, it became a lender required repair. So you also uh, are going to want to, um, besides, of course, uh, fixing, you know, leaky faucets and patching up holes, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, give the home a thorough cleaning. I can recommend a lot of companies that can help you uh, do all these things, right? Paint, uh, declutter even. I have a company that, that comes and helps seniors even, uh, help them to pack their, their belongings and so forth. Uh, they specialize in that type of work. Uh, of course, uh, cleaning companies, that they're a dime a dozen, but I, I know some really good ones. Um, now, uh, the next tip is to enhance curb appeal. Uh, first impressions really do matter. Number one, they're going to look terrific. The, the curb appeal is going to look terrific in the, in the professional photos. Uh, I uh, have a listing that's about to go under contract um, uh, tomorrow, God willing, and we'll get uh, the offer that uh, we're expecting on the home. And uh, that's going to be a terrific uh, uh, opportunity for us, but more importantly, 
I think it had a lot to do with the um, the professional photos, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But I had a beautiful photos on a, on a, a corner lot, and I asked my uh, photographer Lori, uh, who's just an artist, she's terrific. I asked her to to make sure she highlighted the fact that it's a corner lot, and there was a side entry garage, a detached a, a two car side entry garage, and a converted garage into living space that has a uh, has a fireplace and everything. It's beautiful, uh, and all that's been permitted work and so forth. But there's a carport where uh, on where that used to be a driveway going into that garage. So you had the two car garage uh, detached side entry and a side entry uh, carport essentially right for two cars for toys right uh, jet skis uh, small RVs things of that nature so really sweet space but I, I had her highlight that right so the curb appeal is important make sure that the lawn is mowed the leaves are picked up plant in the fall plant flowers in the spring and summer um, and and put that mulch down You'd be surprised, uh, especially a darker colored mulch off of uh, a lighter colored facade. How beautiful is that? It really does make a difference uh, when the buyers drive up with their agents to view the home. And of course, those online uh, uh, photos, uh, which is going we're going to talk about just in just a minute. Uh, the next tip is, of course, to price the home right. Right. Very, very important to price the home right. Uh, from the outset, uh, research the local market uh, to determine an appropriate listing price. Um, and overpricing is going to, of course, not only discourage buyers uh, uh, from um, from purchasing the home. However, uh, the other thing is that if it's priced too high from the outset, it's going to sit for a while, and that's you're going to stigmatize your own property. And next thing you know, it, it's going to linger on the pro on the on the market. And then the next thing that buyers think about when they, they view your home because an agent, their agent sends it to them is, well, it's got so many days on market, what's wrong with it? That's the very first thing that comes out of a buyer's uh, my, uh, uh, mouth when they're uh, uh, talking about a, a property that's been on the market for a while. So price it right from to begin with, right? It's very, very important. And you do that um, by hiring a real estate professional to help you. Um, now, um, when, uh, if I can answer any questions about this process, let me know. And I'd like to tell you uh, what I refer to as critical mass, right? Reach out to me to ask me a little bit more about critical mass because it's very important to understand what that means and what that means to your overall sales price and, of course, uh, your potential uh, income. Uh, the next tip is, uh, is, of course, to market effectively. Again, it, uh, a variety of channels. We always do online and offline marketing. So we have a robust campaigns that we put forth with all of our listings, right? Uh, we do provide a, um, a comprehensive marketing package, um, which um, employs a lot of strategies that you're just not going to hear about, right? We do a lot of target marketing. We talked about that in other videos. Reach out to me for more information about our target marketing to help you sell the home for more money uh, and net the most at the closing table by finding the most opportune buyers. Reach out to me and ask me about that. Um, I'd like to tell you more about it. Um, and of course, uh, you have a plethora of, of uh, online and offline marketing. I won't go into all the different, uh, the different uh, aspects of that. Just reach out to me. I'll be happy to tell you about it. But that's, of course, another uh, tip is to market effectively. Now, we talked about this earlier, uh, make a, your home available for showings. Uh, that's important. Uh, I told you about the, the commitment and motivation that I asked my sellers for. Uh, so be flexible uh, with not only with showings, uh, but also with you know open houses uh, to perhaps accommodate you know potential buyer schedules. Now, uh, we do something, I think we've talked about this in other videos, our, our best bidder home sale, which is uh, which we refer to as an open house on steroids. Uh, reach out to me for more information about that. That's really, really cool. Best bidder home sale. Um, we'd love to tell you more about that and how we use that as another um, uh, strategy to get to net you more money at the closing table uh, using the best bidder home sale. It's like an open house. 
Um, but you're gonna, definitely going to want to not limit the showings. Um, and you're going to want to definitely um, uh, make that home available. Um, two hour notice typically is fair. Uh, I have a seller right now that is willing to do one hour. He, he lives in the home. Um, but he's um, uh, we've worked it out to where he's willing to vacate within one hour, right? He can um, uh, leave the home, you know, with all the lights on and so forth and so on. Uh, but two hours um, tops. Uh, don't do a 24-hour notice. That's cheesy, guys. Don't just don't do that. I, I just you, you got to make the home available to your uh, prospective buyers. If you really want to sell the home and you don't want to for it to linger on the market like we talked about, and you don't want to stigmatize your own property, make it available for showings, folks. Just do it. Um, don't do a 24-hour. And, and allow overlapping showings. Why not? Tell your agent. What for, why not? I mean, you know, I, I, during the pandemic, they would allow over, overlapping showings and there would be a line of, of buyers waiting. Hey, if they want the property bad enough, they'll wait. Even if it's 98 degrees outside. In San Antonio, don't wait. It, it's it's okay to have that kind of much demand is a good, for your 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 listing is a good thing. So allow overlap and showings. We're gentlemen and ladies in the in the real estate business, and we can wait our turn. Okay, if somebody gets there before us, even if it's an overlap and showing, they'll figure it out. They're professionals. Um, next tip is negotiate. Be prepared for the closing process. So. Be prepared, you know, for offers and negotiations. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about hiring a real estate professional. They can help to educate you and how to respond to those offers, including uh, counter offering. Remember that uh, essentially you have two negotiations uh, when selling a home. The first one is, of course, uh, 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 sales price and terms. And the second one is for uh, to negotiate repairs. Okay, after the during due diligence period where the buyer is going to bring in their inspectors, any type of inspector that they want uh, to come view the property and they have the right to do so during due diligence, which in San Antonio typically is between seven to 10 days. Okay, they'll usually pay you $10 a day uh, for seven days or 10 days, whatever that is. And those uh, those repairs need to be negotiated by the last day of that option period by 5 p.m. Okay, so. What I like to do for my clients uh, when we do receive an offer is to write up a net sheet. I have a really slick tool that I use, uh, which is great to evaluate the profit that you can expect uh, to receive. Uh, I use a program uh, which is done through Independence Title. Uh, so they'll even use a, a process they call a, a system they call Homelink, which can already pull in the taxes. So certainly if it's done by a title company, it's pretty accurate. That's another reason why I like to use their program, their software, because when I present a net sheet uh, to a seller, so the potential uh, income they can expect um, out of the sale of the home, uh, it's pretty darn accurate. Down to a couple hundred dollars, give or take. And it's really cool when you have multiple offers. Uh, during the pandemic, when we'd have four or five offers, I would literally the, the 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 software enables you to juxtapose all of those um, those offers, you know, for the, the side by side comparisons, right? And um, and to see what they would potentially net, the type of loan that the buyer is bringing, if they are or if it's cash, whatever that those circumstances are, so they can kind of better make that decision uh, and and discuss it with their their uh, their professional real estate professional. Understand the closing process, uh, the associated costs, including uh, realtor commissions, uh, legal fees, and you know what the settlement statement is going to look like. Um, ensure that all the necessary documents are ready for a smooth closing. Um, if there were any types of uh, uh, debts involved, uh, make sure you provide that to your real estate professional so they can, of course, provide that to the title company, kind of get a leg up on some of that background work that they're going to need to do. Um, so make sure that you're you're transparent throughout the process. And that seller's disclosure, uh, I like to use Seller Shield, my brokerage, 
Uh, I have I have a, a um, uh, an arrangement with Seller Shield so that uh, all of our um, listings uh, we have a Seller Shield, which is uh, basically a tutorial, right? That enables you to to kind of go step by step process by for filling out that necessary state um, disclosure uh, that every seller has to provide, with a few exceptions. If you have if you have any questions about what those exceptions are, reach out to me because there are, are a few uh, exceptions in which the the uh, sellers are precluded or excused from uh, providing a, a seller's disclosure. Um, so the last tip, I'm going to give you another one, um, and I've probably done more than five already. Uh, hopefully that's okay. If you watch this far, it's it, then it's it's good educational content you're getting. The last one, of course, is to work with a, an experienced real estate agent. And you know, more than anything else, uh, you know, you're going to want to work with a skilled agent that can provide a valuable insight, handle those complexities of the deal, and of course, you know, selling process marketing the property effectively, you know, and helping you negotiate on your behalf to get the best possible um, uh, price and terms. And more than anything else, it's not a salesman's line when I tell you this, don't try to do it by yourself. I, I, you know, no, nothing sadder to me than seeing uh, a listing uh, uh, on, on Zillow or something, you know, for sale by owner. And it's priced way, way too high or even too low where they're leaving equity on the table. And I'm just, it breaks my heart because, um, you know, I got, I got to tell you, you know, I, for sale by owners, they don't want to pay commission. Obviously they think they can do it on their own, but the, the truth of the matter is that, um, cost is only a factor in the absence of value. So you're going to want to hire a good professional, that can provide that guidance and assistance and, you know, and that marketing more anything else, right? We're professional uh, realtors, we're licensed uh, agents, but we're professional marketers, you know, and it's, it's all about um, putting out uh, good content in, in a steady fashion with retargeting even, because uh, I think we can all agree that buying a home is not an event. It's not an overnight uh, deal where somebody wakes up one day and says, hey, you know, let's go buy a house today. It's a process the buyers go through, right? It's a, um, they're gonna do some due diligence for a while and do some research. So there will be buyers that are initially interested in your home that don't make a decision right away. So it's important to be able to retarget those uh, potential buyers to stay in front of them with useful and helpful content about your house. Those are the things that we specialize in. So ask me for more information if you're interested. Um, but don't try to sell it on your own. I just that I would give you that as perhaps the 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 biggest tip of all out of all these I just gave you. And again, it's not a salesman's line. Don't hire Santino Properties LLC if you don't want to. I just hire somebody, right? There's a plethora of of real estate professionals in this uh, in this city. And a lot of them are really, really good at what they do. Um, so call upon us as a community. Uh, remember that uh, in other videos we've talked about the difference between a real estate agent and a realtor. Uh, and you're gonna you're gonna want to hire a realtor because we're held to the highest standard of our profession. Uh, we are bound to a code of ethics. So you can pick a, a someone who just just has a license, a real estate agent. That's that's fine, I guess. However, we go a step further as realtors. And again, there's 14,000 of us that are members of the local board that when we're all realtors. Uh, so I do recommend that you hire one of the 14,000, right? You have a, a whole bunch to choose from. Um, and again, reach out to me if you have any questions about that process as well. So selling a home can be a challenging process, uh, you know, but with careful preparation, and the right guidance, like what we've been talking about, I think you can maximize your chances of a successful sale and, of course, a favorable sales price. So that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm Realtor Bert Tade. I'm also broker owner of Santino Properties LLC, uh, a boutique uh, real estate brokerage that specializes in the use of, uh, of effective and unique use of marketing to help our buyers and sellers win in this competitive San Antonio marketplace. 
And I'm Realtor Bert Tade, and this has been a sip of coffee or tea with Realtor Bert, Realtor Bert Tade. That's it for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, again, uh, I'm not sure what platform you're watching this on, but it's probably in a post right up above here uh, is my phone number. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Text me, DM, uh, email me, uh, call me the old fashioned way, whatever you'd like to do. Send up some smoke signals. I don't know. Uh, just reach out to me for uh, more guidance because uh, I'm here to help and I'm here to be a free resource to you as well. Uh, and uh, that's it for now. Leave me a comment below and tell me what you think about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.